Christy the Frog, Hansel and Gretel. Hi everybody, my name is Natasha and I've been commanded by His Royal Highness Prince Bertie the Frog to tell you a story, Nori. It's a rather scary story. Do you like rather scary stories? You won't be frightened, will you? Just a bit. Because you know, I think I'm going to be just a bit scared when I tell you about the wicked witch who liked to eat little children. So listen quietly and I will tell you the story Nori of Hansel and Gretel from Andrew Lang's Blue Fairy Book. Once upon a time, there lived on the outskirts of a large forest a poor woodcutter with his wife and two children. The boy was called Hansel and the girl Gretel. He always had very little money, even to buy food. And once, when times were really bad, they had to get by with one piece of bread and butter each day. One night, as he was tossing about in bed, full of cares and worry, he sighed and said to his wife, What's to become of us? How are we to feed our poor children, now that we have nothing more for ourselves? I tell you what, husband, answered the woman, early tomorrow morning we'll take the children out into the thickest part of the wood. There we shall light a fire for them and give them each a piece of bread. Then we'll go on to our work and leave them alone. They won't be able to find their way home and we shall be rid of them. No, wife, said her husband, that I won't do. How could I find it in my heart to leave my children alone in the wood? The wild beasts would soon come and tear them to pieces. Oh, you fool, said she. Then we must all four die of hunger, and you may just as well go and saw the wood for our coffins. And they argued and argued until he agreed that they must get rid of Hansel and Gretel. But I can't help feeling sorry for the poor children, added the husband. The children, too, had not been able to sleep for hunger and had heard what their stepmother had said to her father. Gretel wept bitterly and spoke to Hansel. Now it's all over for us. No, no, Gretel, said Hansel. Don't worry. I'll find a way to escape. No fear. And when the parents had fallen asleep, he got up, slipped on his little coat, opened the back door and crept out. The moon was shining clearly and the white pebbles which lay in front of the house glittered like bits of silver. Hansel bent down and filled his pocket with as many of them as he could cram in. Then he went back and said to Gretel, It's all right, my dear little sister, and go to sleep. God will not desert us. And he lay down in bed again. At daybreak, even before the sun was up, the woman came and woke the two children. Get up, you sleepy heads. We're all going to the forest to fetch wood. She gave them each a bit of bread and said, there's something for your lunch, but don't you eat it up before lunchtime, because it's all you'll get. Gretel took the bread under her apron, as Hansel had the stones in his pocket. Then they all set out together on the way to the forest. After they had walked for a little, Hansel stood still and looked back at the house, and all the while he kept on holding back again and again. His father observed him and said, Hansel, what are you gazing at there? And why do you always remain behind? Take care and don't lose your way. Oh, father, said Hansel, I'm looking back at my white kitten, which is sitting on the roof, waving me bye-bye. The woman exclaimed, What a donkey you are! That isn't your kitten. That's the morning sun shining on the chimney. But Hansel had not looked back at his kitten. But each time he stopped, he had dropped one of the white pebbles out of his pocket to mark the way back home so that he and little Gretel could not get lost in the woods. When they had reached 
the middle of the forest. The father said, Now, children, go and fetch a lot of wood, and I'll light a fire that you may not feel cold. Hansel and Gretel heaped up brushwood till they had made a pile nearly the size of a small hill. The brushwood was set fire to, and when the flames leaped high, the woman said, Now lie down at the fire, children, and rest yourselves. We are going into the forest to cut down wood. When we've finished, we'll come back and fetch you. But instead, the old parents crept back to their cottage, leaving the children behind. Hansel and Gretel sat down beside the fire, and at midday ate their little bits of bread. And when they had sat for a long time, their eyes closed with tiredness, and they fell fast asleep. When they awoke at last, it was pitch dark. Gretel began to cry and said, How are we ever going to get out of the wood? But Hansel comforted her. Wait a bit, he said, till the moon is up, and then we'll find our way sure enough. And when the full moon had risen, he took his sister by the hand and followed the pebbles, which shone like bright new coins, and showed them the path. They walked on through the night, and at daybreak reached their father's house again. They knocked at the door, and when the woman opened it, she exclaimed, You naughty children! What a long time you've slept in the wood! We thought you were never going to come back! But the father rejoiced, for he felt guilty for leaving his children behind them. Not long afterward, again a great shortage of food in the land, and the children heard their mother speak to their father in bed one night like this. Everything is eaten up once more. We have only half a loaf of bread in the house, and when that's done, it's all up with us. The children must be got rid of. We'll lead them deeper into the wood this time, so that they won't be able to find their way out again. There's no other way of saving ourselves. The man's heart felt heavy, and he thought, Surely it would be better to share the last bite with one's children. But his wife wouldn't listen to his arguments, and they quarrelled for a long time until the old man finally agreed that the children had to be got rid of, although he was very sad about it. But the children were awake and had heard the conversation. When the old people were asleep, Hansel got up and wanted to go out and pick up pebbles again, as he had done the first time. But the woman had barred the door, and Hansel couldn't get out. But he consoled his little sister and said, Don't cry, Gretel, and sleep peacefully, for God is sure to help us. At early dawn, the woman came and made the children get up. She gave them their bit of bread, but it was even smaller than the time before. On the way to the wood, Hansel crumbled it in his pocket, and every few minutes he stood still and dropped a crumb on the ground. Hansel, what are you stopping and looking about you for? said the father. I'm looking back at my little pigeon, which is sitting on the roof waving me farewell, answered Hansel. Fool, said the wife, that isn't your pigeon. It's the morning sun glittering on the chimney. But Hansel gradually threw all his crumbs on the path. The woman led the children still deeper into the forest, farther than they had ever been in their lives before. Then a big fire was lit again, and the mother said, Just sit down there, children, and if you're tired you can sleep a bit. We're going into the forest to cut down wood. And in the evening, when we're finished, we'll come back to fetch you. At midday, Gretel divided her bread with Hansel, for he had strewn it all along their path. Then they fell asleep, and evening passed away, but nobody came to the poor children. They didn't wake till it was pitch dark, and Hansel comforted his sister, saying, Only wait, Gretel, till the moon rises. 
Then we shall see the breadcrumbs that are scattered along the path. They will show us back to the house. When the moon appeared, they got up, but they found no crumbs. For the thousands of birds that fly about the woods and fields had picked them all up. Never mind, said Hansel to Gretel. You'll see we'll find a way out. But all the same, they did not. They wandered about the whole night, and the next day, from morning till evening, but they could not find a path out of the wood. They were very hungry too, for they had nothing to eat but a few berries they found growing on the ground. And at last they were so tired that their legs refused to carry them any longer, so they lay down under a tree and fell fast asleep. On the third morning, after they had left their father's house, they set about their wandering again, but only got deeper and deeper into the wood. And now they felt that if help did not come to them soon, they must perish. At midday, they saw a beautiful little snow-white bird sitting on a branch, which sang so sweetly that they stopped still and listened to it. And when its song was finished, it flapped its wings and flew on in front of them. They followed it and came to a little house, on the roof of which it perched. And when they came quite near, they saw that the cottage was made of bread and roofed with cakes, while the window was made of transparent sugar. Now we'll tuck in, said Hansel, and stuff our faces with the food. I'll eat a bit of the roof, and you, Gretel, can eat some of the window, which you'll find a tasty little snack. Hansel stretched up his hand and broke off a little bit of the roof to see what it was like from the roof. And Gretel went to the window and began to nibble at it. At that moment, a shrill voice came out from the room inside. Nibble, nibble, little mouse, who's nibbling at my house? The children answered, "'Tis heaven's own child, the tempest wild, and went on eating, for they were ever so hungry, and Hansel in particular had rather bad manners. He was thoroughly enjoying eating the roof and tore down a big bit of it, while Gretel pushed out a whole round window pane and sat down the better to enjoy it. Suddenly the door opened, and an ancient woman was leaning on a stick hobbled out. Hansel and Gretel were so terrified that they let what they had in their hands fall. But the old woman shook her head and said, Oh, you dear children, who led you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm shall happen to you. She took them both by the hand and led them into the house and laid a most delicious dinner before them, milk and sugared pancakes with apples and nuts. After they had finished, two beautiful little white beds were prepared for them and when Hansel and Gretel lay down in them, they felt as if they had got into heaven. The old woman appeared to be most friendly. But she was really an old witch who used to steal children and had only built the little bread house in order to lure them in. When anyone came into her power, she killed, cooked and ate him or her and held a regular feast day for the occasion. Now witches have red eyes and cannot see far, but like beasts, they have a keen sense of smell and to know when human beings pass by. When Hansel and Gretel fell into her hands, she laughed wickedly and said jeeringly, I've got them now. They shan't escape me. Early in the morning, before the children were awake, she rose up, and when she saw them both sleeping so peacefully with their round rosy cheeks, she muttered to herself, That'll be a dainty bite to eat. Then she seized Hansel with her bony hand and carried him into the little stable and locked the door on him. He might scream as much as he liked. It did him no good. Then she went to Gretel, shook her till she awoke and cried, Get up, you lazy bones! 
fetch water and cook something for your brother. When he's fat, I'll eat him up. Gretel began to cry bitterly, but it was of no use. She had to do what she was told. So the best food was cooked for poor Hansel, but Gretel got nothing but crab shells. Every morning the old woman hobbled out to the stable and cried, Hansel, put out your finger that I may feel if you are getting fat. But Hansel always stretched out an old bone, and the old dame, whose eyes were dim, couldn't see it, and thinking always it was Hansel's finger, wondered why he fattened slowly. When four weeks had passed, and Hansel still remained thin, she lost patience and decided to wait no longer. Hi, Gretel, she called to the girl. Be quick and get some water. Hansel may be fat or thin. I'm going to kill him tomorrow or cook him. Oh, how the poor little sister sobbed as she carried the water, and how the tears rolled down her cheeks. Kind heaven, help us now, she cried. If only the wild beasts in the wood had eaten us, then at least we should have died together. Just hold your peace, said the old hag. It won't help you. Early in the morning, Gretel had to go out and hang up the kettle full of water and light the fire. First, we'll make a pie, said the old witch. I've heated the oven already and rolled the pastry. She pushed Gretel out to the oven, from which fiery flames were already jumping. Creep in, said the witch, and see if it's properly heated so that we can shove in the pie. For when she had got Gretel in, she meant to close the oven and let the girl roast, that she might eat her up too. But Gretel saw through her wicked trick and said, I don't know how I'm going to do it. How do I get in? You silly goose, said the old hag. The opening is big enough. See, I could get in myself. And she crawled toward it and poked her head in the oven. Then Gretel gave her a shove that sent her right in, shut the iron door and drew the bolt. Gracious! How she yelled! But Gretel fled, and the wretched old woman was left to roast in her own oven. Gretel flew straight to Hansel, opened the little stable door and cried, Hansel, we are free! The old woman is dead! Then Hansel sprang like a bird out of a cage when the door is opened. How happy they were! They jumped for joy and hugged and kissed one another, and as they had no longer any cause for fear, they went into the old hag's house. And here they found, in every corner of the room, boxes with pearls and precious stones. These are even better than pebbles, said Hansel, and crammed his pockets full of them. And Gretel said, I too will bring some home. And she filled her apron full. But now, said Hansel, Let's go and get well away from the witch's wood. When they had wandered about for some hours, they came to a big lake. We can't get over, said Hansel. I see no bridge of any sort or kind. Yes, there's no ferry boat either, answered Gretel. But look, there swims a white duck. If I ask her, she'll help us over. And she called out. Here are two sad children who can't cross the lake to get home because there is no bridge nor ferry boat. Take us upon your white back and row us over. Quack, quack! The duck swam toward them and Hansel got on her back and told his little sister to sit beside him. No, answered Gretel. We should be too heavy a load for the duck. She shall carry us across separately. The good bird did this, and when they were landed safely on the other side and had walked for a while, the wood became more and more familiar to them, and at last they saw their father's house in the distance. Then they set off to run, 
and bounding into the room jumped up to hug their father. The man had not passed a happy hour since he had left them in the wood, but his wife had died. Gretel shook out her apron so that the pearls and precious stones rolled about the room, and Hansel threw down one handful after the other out of his pocket. And so all their troubles were ended, and they lived happily ever after. And that's the story, Nori, of Hansel and Gretel. I'm glad it all ended happily, at least for Hansel and Gretel and their father, even if the Wicked Witch did get roasted in her own oven. Prince Bertie the Frog would like to meet all his new friends at his lovely green and purple website. You can see what he looks like there. So drop by at storynori.com. I'll be telling you another story, Nori, soon. So for now, from me, Natasha, bye-bye. <laughs>